I am coming to believe that the greatest barrier to enacting large scale and high impact social change really does stem in large part from our inability to experience ourselves as connected rather than separate from and different than others. Love, as Martin Luther King Jr. once said, is the supreme unifying principle of life. Of course, he also reminded us that while power without love is reckless and abusive, love without power is sentimental and anemic. There are a few lenses through which we can look at this idea of the love that does justice. The first somewhat rational approach is articulated by Mike Edwards, former director of the Ford Foundation's Governance and Civil Society Program and author of the recently released The Love That Does Justice, Spiritual Activism Meets in Dialogue with Social Service. In a speech by the same title given a few years ago, Mike, who is a trained social scientist and 20-something year veteran in the field of international development, claimed that the future of the world depends on how successful we are in developing and applying a new social science of love, which he calls a radically different form of rationality, a rationality of love into action. From Mike's perspective, it is the absence of this critical element, this love ethic and orientation in the work for peace and social justice that often results in the failure to build the alliances and collective wisdom that could lead to significant and sustainable social change. I once heard Paul Farmer, founder of Partners in Health and subject of the extraordinary book, Mountains Beyond Mountains, describe it in another way. He said, there's charity, which is I am rich and you are poor. I want to give to you to alleviate your suffering. There's equity, which is I have had opportunities and access enabling me to succeed. I want to level the playing field so that you have opportunity and access and can also succeed. And then there is solidarity, which is if you are poor, I am poor. We're in this together. Someone pointed out to me recently that two thirds of the world really does live from the heart. And I remembered when in Zimbabwe a couple of years ago, being struck by the morning greeting of the Shona, which is, did you sleep well? And the answer is always, I slept well if you slept well. It was on that same trip that I was also introduced to the Zulu concept of Ubuntu, I am because of you. Buddhism teaches us that if you open your heart to the rest of the world, you will feel tremendous sadness. And it is this experience of the sad and tender heart that gives birth to fearlessness and bravery. And so it is that we as social change agents must attend to our interior condition to keep our hearts open, to be brave and fearless so that we can be in solidarity, so that we can connect.